Hi, uh, I'm Jason Harris. I work in the front end and I'm talking today about uh, template boxes, advanced notations, typesetting, and how you can create your own notations to uh, facilitate your, your notations in the field of study or work that you work in and implement those in Mathematica in the same way that we do internally. So in this talk and workshop, we're going to de detail some of the advanced typesetting capabilities in Mathematica. We're going to explore ways in which you can create your own typeset notations, which are particular to your field of study or practice. As Stephen talked about last night, uh, we're very interested in computational essays and being able to express things computationally in Mathematica. And of course, we want to be able to extend Mathematica in certain ways. And this is what we'll, we'll have a tour through uh, a lot of the capabilities of the underlying bits of the front end and, the, the, and how that talks to the kernel. Um, through this, through this talk and workshop. Okay, so um, we're going to cover uh, how the front end represents things uh, and how it actually talks to the kernel through this make boxes and make expression here. Um, and so uh, we're going to discuss, of course, style sheets, which are involved with template boxes and how to package up your own notations. And interspersed with this, we're going to talk about some of the new, new features um, that, that I've uh, and we have added um, to Mathematica over the last um, wee while. Okay, so the first bit of this talk, we're going to talk about how the front end actually represents things internally. And it does so by boxes. And so we're going to talk about those. Then we're going to talk about make boxes and make expression and how the typesetting system talks between the front end and the kernel and how we can uh, influence that and, and, and change how it interprets things. Uh, then we'll move on to template boxes. Um, these sort of modern structures which have sort of taken over a lot of the internal typesetting in Mathematica. We'll talk about style sheets, how to pa package these things up, um, talk about some enhancements for template boxes, and finally we'll round out some stuff with the notation package and how to shortcut a lot of the work that we'll see as we, as we start developing stuff and examples. So okay, let's start with our simple goal. So in Mathematica, of course, we can enter some partial derivative of x of, um, you know, x cubed. And, and that works, and that's fine, that's great. Mathematica knows how to do that. Oh, in fact, I'll just quit my kernel here, which I should have done before. Just start off with a nice, fresh version of, of Mathematica. Uh, pristine, so you know I've got nothing up my sleeve. Um, so Mathematica can um, uh, turn around and decide to uh, connect maybe to the network, which it's having problems with. Um, <laughs> ah, fun. Um, yeah, that's a nice clean start to the, the whole thing. Okay, so our goal, of course, and, and watching this go, um, I'm using our own development version. There, there we go. Whew, that took a long time to try and connect. Um, so uh, it found the derivative and, and record slow time. Um, and so our, our goal here is if given, given that, um, Mathematica doesn't understand this uh, partial plus. So it understands, of course, partial x, but not, for instance, partial plus. And of course, the mathematical sciences are big. There's many notations out there. And our, our goal is to be able to work in the notations that would like. And so we need to be able to extend Mathematica. Some notations out there conflict. Some, some ways we represent things uh, possibly um, are, are, are not built into Mathematica and we'd like to be able to add them. So that's our goal. Sure. You didn't get an input cell. I'm not too sure what you did. Try it again. Um, so, so okay. So everything in Mathematica is actually boxes. So if we if we turn around and we enter some you know expression as we'd normally do through the normal editor, that's actually represented internally in the front end by boxes. And so you can use this show expressions thing, uh, uh, this this menu option. Um, the accelerator is Command Shift E or shortcut Control Shift E on Windows. And if we select that, we actually see what the internal representation of the structure is. And so this x cubed here is represented by this superscript box. And uh, of course, there's this grouping along with the plus and the two inside a row box. And further to this, if we take a look at this particular example, just a normal sort of integral, and we take a look at it, well, we see here this is an integral. It's got the integral character. It's got an infinity. It's a sub-superscript box to get from 0 to infinity. It has an exponential e here, uh, superscript box, power, and so on. And in fact, in this structure, we could go in and actually change that to a t, for instance. Uh, in inside the actual boxes. And as we see, it's changed it on the outside. That will have the exact same effect as if we'd done it through the normal editor in Mathematica. And so, of course, uh, these, if my 
process is not heinously slow. Wow, the kernel is slow today. I'm not, maybe I've got lots of things open. Um, Uh, how am I making it full form? Uh, to, to, to get that form, uh, I hit Command-Shift-E like this, and so that's right under cell, the cell menu, Command-Shift-E. And so, of course, this, these both evaluate to a conditional expression. We can um, evaluate that, and, of course, uh, it works just as one would expect. Okay, so let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail. Here we've got this input field. It's got a dynamic uh, for the, uh, that, that's, that, that changes continuously in terms of, and it expresses, it sets that the boxes in terms of boxes as this continuous action goes to true. And so here, what we can do is we can enter something like A plus B, and we actually see the expression that the front end has internally right here as we type stuff. And so if we type A plus B uh, times C, for instance, we actually see that internally the front end has grouped this uh, structure uh, nicely and it's parsed it. And so that's the parser going on inside the front end. And so that's uh, my job along with uh, some of the other people is, you know, I type some particular integral, zero, you see this is a subscript box, and if I type the other, I get a sub superscript box, you know, of e to the, you know, minus x, you know, escape differential dx. And so you can see all these boxes appear and disappear uh, as we type stuff. And so that's the front end parser representing the internals of Mathematica. So it's about boxes underneath. And you might say, well, okay, that's fine for typeset math, but what about graphics? Graphics is surely something different, but it isn't. A graphics here is actually a graphics box with a line box, all these various line boxes. And you might say, well, that's simple for simple points and lines, but what about something complicated like a Bezier curve? Well, a Bezier curve is actually underneath a Bezier curve box. And so all graphics, tubes, 3D stuff, weird stuff, it's all boxes. And in fact, you might say, well, what about styling elements? You know, that's really something different. But no, a style is actually a style box. You might say controls are different. The controls, as you type them in into Mathematica and, and use them, that must be some UI thing. But in fact, a button is actually a button box underneath. And here we have a slider that's connected to a dynamic here. And as I move that, you know, the slider changes the value of mn and, and changes there. And of course, a slider is represented by a slider box. And a dynamic is represented by a dynamic box. So it's all about boxes. Everything in the front end internally basically is all about boxes. There's some cells that wrap it and notebooks that wrap those. And yep. There's, yeah, so the uh, um, list plot, uh, yeah, list plot, and now if my documentation is cooperating, we take a look at that, command shift E, and you see there's a graphics box of RGB box, the absolute thickness of blah, 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 and they're all boxes, grid lines, and you know, so on, and, and, and various options. And what's the But it is still a box. But if you, if, if for instance, you want to style one of them separately from the others, then you would have three. You would have the ones that come before it, that and one that you style, and then the ones that come after. Okay. And you can have like three different complex boxes, like if you have three different. But there, there would be three. There would be three sets of line of uh, point boxes. Uh, right. So. So of course, um, so we go back to our goal now. So now that you know that the internal representation of everything in the front end is actually boxes, what was our goal? Our goal was to be able to, Mathematica, to be able to handle computations and, and, and new things, things that aren't previously defined. So what's going on? How do we, so generators, we can't just use those. They're you know, just like style or bo button. They're, they're, they're not sufficient. So what is the actual evaluation model of what's going on in Mathematica? So what happens is we start with the box structure. Um, as we see on screen, it gets parsed through make expression to a new kernel expression. It happens through evaluation, gets a new kernel expression, and then it gets formatted to a new box structure. So let's, let's see this sort of in action here. So if I evaluate this, as I see it in the front end, partial derivative of y of sine y over 2, it gives us cosine y over 2. Very clear, derivative of sine is cosine. What's, what's sort of going on here? So what happens is we start out with a box structure. Which box structure? Well, the box structure that's rendered is partial y sine y over 2. And that's internally represented in the front end as this you know, uh, row box of subscript uh, subscript box here, partial d, the y, the fraction box, and sine y, and blah, blah, blah. 
Okay, and so that actually gets parsed through make expression and sent off to the kernel to get this new expression as you'd normally type into a terminal, d sine y over two, that gets evaluated in the kernel to a new expression here, cosine y over two, derivative of sine is cosine, that will then get sent to the front end as formatted into boxes and it'll be sent to these boxes, a fraction box of row box of cosine y over two, and that looks like in the front end, cosine y over two. And that's how we perceive the evaluation to occur. And in fact, we can take a look at this if we go here to the notebooks kernel, take a look at link snooper, go here and just evaluate this again in there. And I'll grab these, this expression here, paste it in here, blow that up, and we can actually see right up the top, and this enter expression, uh, the, the front end is sending off to the kernel here, this make expression of this various things. Here's the encoding of the partial D in some weird encoding, um, and this fraction box and so on. And then the kernel right here will be sending back the made boxes um, to the front end. So that's what's happening there. Um, and so you can sort of see this communication. Let's go back and actually quit link snooper here and go back and check change my kernel to local. Okay, so you can take a look at make boxes and make expression. So these are the things, these make expression here that does the parsing right here, and we take boxes, and the boxes become an expression, so it's make expression, and we have the formatting, it takes an expression and gives us boxes, and so that's make boxes. So let's do our first example here of partial plus. This was the example we had, PD plus of X with respect to um, PD plus of plus of x. Right now, that doesn't actually work in Mathematica. So what we need to do is we need to add some for parsing rules that'll actually let that actually work. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, make expression of some um, boxes. Well, which boxes? So we, we unformat the cell there, we grab the boxes like so, and in standard form, we can confirm that Mathematica right now, it doesn't know how to make those boxes. So which boxes would we like it to be? Well, we want it to be PD, we want it to, in the end, be this expression, PD plus. That's gonna be our full form of this partial plus of X. And so, if we take a look, Mathematica does know how to make those boxes. So if I say make expression of the boxes here, I'll grab these, like so, paste those in, in standard form, and Mathematica does know how to make those. So what we can do is we can simply tell Mathematica how to make those boxes it doesn't know in terms of these boxes it does know. As so, and now if I evaluate this right here, partial plus of x, I can actually see Mathematica's been able to interpret it. By defining this make expression rule of the boxes it doesn't know in terms of boxes it does know, I can now evaluate this and Mathematica can now parse uh, this weirdo notation it didn't know before our first notation. So that, that, that's good, but if I change that to partial plus of t, it doesn't understand that because of course this is x. So I need to change this to a variable x there and change this to a variable. And now this is a, a general notation. It works, I've changed it. I can you know, put that over two and so on and, and it does what it's meant to. So that's grand. So that, that works, but that's only half of it because now if I turn around and have some expression pd plus, plus, you know, PD plus of, you know, R here, something else, it doesn't get formatted in partial pluses. Um, and so we need a rule to actually say this, how this expression should look like. So make boxes um, of what, what thing are we gonna do? We're gonna have make boxes of this expression, and I've lost my completions. Oh, standard. Uh, Ooh, I'm gonna need my completions. I absolutely need my completions. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna, that's a, maybe the bug here and what's going on. I'm gonna have to restart that. That's a, a version, um, and that's in Tom's code, not mine. <laughs> so so uh, let's go here. So um, back to here, we've got this first rule, the make expression rule that we've actually had, um, and now we want a rule for make, oh, there we go, make boxes, there we go. And of what, which boxes we're gonna make, of expression PD plus of uh, something R, 
in standard form is going to be some set of boxes. Well, which boxes is it going to be? It's going to be our escape, P, escape PD uh, plus of X, for instance. And so it's going to be those boxes. I'll just go here, grab them. Um, and, and you note that my trick is I'm entering the external expression in Mathematica, and then I um, get the underlying boxes, and that gives me the structured boxes here. And of course, I need an R here. Um, this needs to be general for any R, so I'll put this in. And so we think, well, that, that, that's probably going to work. And so we get PD+, plus, but it doesn't. So it gives us this weird cell context-y thing. Uh, which is going on. So that looks like we're taking make boxes, takes an expression, and gives us boxes, but this expression here, this R is an expression, so this is an expression here, and we've got boxes, so this needs to be further made right here to make boxes of R comma standard form. Okay, and now we'll see this will work, it'll give us a right thing, and uh, it, it all works. So we've now got partial plus of, you know, plus there, plus, you know, T and so on, and it has the right full forms and, and everything works. Okay, so those are our rules for partial pluses. And now that we've added this notation, um, we can turn around and use it. And so we can say the simple rule, uh, partial plus of the sum of things is the sum of the partial pluses. We just define it, it, it works, it's a, full, it's a full notation in Mathematica, and it gives us the right answer, and of course that has the right full form. Okay, so the, the, this, this trick is we, it's best to create your notations. As you've seen, I, I type them in uh, in 2D, and I get the underlying boxes, and I use those in my expressions. So one thing before I give you your first example to actually sort of think about, um, if I enter in some expression PD plus another trick that's kind of good, um, so I've entered in this in, in a sort of input form. I can use this other option here, cell convert to standard form, command shift N, and it will actually go through this make boxes and make expression for standard form. We defined all of these rules kind of quickly here for standard form, these make boxes and make expression rules. And so here, they've been applied. I can go back to input form, standard form, input form, standard form, and you actually see that this, it's actually using these rules. And as we define these rules, it's quite important that we, we obey the evaluation properties and make sure we don't have any leakage. So in other words, when I go back, command shift N, command shift I, command shift N, um, I'm not evaluating this two plus two. Okay, so our first example here for you guys to actually sort of think about. So um, I, I know that you don't have tables in front of you. We don't actually have the notebook, but uh, just sort of to think about this. What, how would we handle this? So uh, this is a, a notation. It's built into Mathematica partially uh, for function evaluation. Um, so that's quite nice. I can show that to the average person, like your average Java programmer maybe, and they'll understand it, whereas they won't understand this. Okay, so we'd like, of course, this here, when we enter some, some sort of function here, function of, you know, b comma b cubed, for instance, here, we'd like that to appear like this, by default, in standard form. It, it appears like that in traditional form. If I hit command shift T to get to traditional form, it appears like that, but not in standard form. How would I go about doing this? No idea. No idea? So we're, we're going to be using make boxes or make expression, right? So we're, we've got to, to do something. So it actually understands, of course, make expression because it can parse this. It, it, can, it can understand this. So it can go from there to an expression function, and then it can evaluate it. But the make boxes going from this expression back to a different set of boxes is not defined. So we're going to need a make expression rule. We're going to be going from a make boxes rule, I should say. We're going to be going from Quick question. Sure. Well, so, 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 so Lou and Itai up the back and a few of the other people have defined uh, that the, they're my compatriots in this, uh, in this endeavor. They've defined for traditional form. Uh, yeah, the, they've defined a lot of this, uh, these sorts of notations. Um, and so they've decided what does traditional form look like? What does standard form look like? And so they've put these rules in. So now it's up to you if you want to bend Mathematica to your will um, to actually decide what you want to do and put them in as you'd like. And so this, through this talk, then you've in the end got the power to actually do this. So we need a make boxes rule here. And we're going to make some expression into boxes. And so which kind of thing? Something else like that. Which boxes? Well, let's just go here and grab these boxes. And so as before, we grab these boxes here. 
And so, of course, well, we don't want this just for b. We want this for some general variable. We'll call it v, um, maybe the function f. We know now to put this in as a v, and this thing here is in as an f. OK, so that should actually work, but it won't. And why won't it work? Well, of course, this is an expression. That's an expression. These are all boxes, so this must, needs to be a box as well. So this needs to be, and make boxes further, recursively call that in standard form, and the same way with the f right over here. It is, and I'm going to do another one, and then another one, and then another one, so you actually get it. And so now, of course, this works as you'd expect, um, and it now parses, and our functions now appear by a standard like this throughout our code, and we can read it, and we say, that's, that's comprehensible, and we like that in, in terms of the other. Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, so the, I'm, I'm building up the reasoning to, to actually how we get, so this, as I go through this talk, we'll actually use the notation package. And I'm so, uh, notation package actually works by exactly doing this. It's a transpiler. It, it will take your notation statements and actually compile them or transpile them, generate code equivalent to this. And so you can actually sort of see it. So I'm explaining the internals, um, and we want to know that for this template box sort of stuff coming up. Uh, but good question. So, so let's take a look at another example here, up and down. So we have, you know, like maybe a spin glass in physics or, you know, electrons with some spin or something and some ket or bra um, would actually like to, to represent. And, of course, Mathematica doesn't understand this again and would like this to be understood as up of A. So we have some nice notation for, for spins. So, uh, so first of all, since it doesn't understand it, we need to, as before, go back to our diagram and take a look. We need this parsing step, this make expression. We've got a box structure. Kernel can't understand it. So we need to be able to parse it. So we, we go back here, and we're going to be a make expression here, and make expression, and we're going to make some boxes. Which boxes? Well, these boxes that Mathematica doesn't understand. Subsuperscript box here in standard form, and we're going to make that in, in terms of some boxes that it does understand, which are these boxes here. So this is going to be uh, make make expression of something, comma, standard form right there. And which boxes is it going to have? It's going to have these boxes right here. And of course, we need to make this general. So this needs to be an A underscore, and this needs to be an A. And now, Mathematica can actually parse our, our up. And of course, if we have up of A plus up of B, we turn around and it's not, it's not formatting as our up uh, we would like it to look like this, of course, because that's, that's what we're used to in physics or wh whatever field we're using it in. And so we need now, of course, a make boxes rule to take this expression here, up of A, in standard form, to a set of boxes. Which boxes? Well, these boxes. And so here, it's going to be like that. And of course, this here, this A, I, I won't show you the, well, here again, of course, this is an expression. And here, this is boxes, so this needs to be further made by make boxes in standard form right here. Okay, and now our up of A and up of B actually work. They give us the right form, so we can turn around and simply just get these rules, merge this to the other, copy those, get here, and change this to a down arrow. Down arrow, and change this to down, and likewise down, and likewise down arrow. Okay, and now we've got up and down, so I can enter in on my up plus down of you know t, and now I can hit my command shift n from before, and I get my uh, it gets the formatting. It uses these make expression make boxes rules, and it has of course the correct full form, and I've added notations for um, my up and down. Okay. Oh yeah, sure, go. Exactly. And so, so yes, so our, our, our boxes, when we were making boxes, we have an expression here, and so all of, this, all of this side has to be boxes, and of course, then we recursively further make it. So it's a little bit different because our make expression statements here, they're, they, we, we, express, we solve the make expression by writing, rewriting it in terms of another make expression it knows. But make boxes internally, we actually write it to the actual final answer. So it's a little bit lopsided in how it works. You can uh, make, make expression give you the final result, but you've got to be very careful about the holding attributes uh, as you go on and do stuff. So it's, it's a bit tricky. Rob. Uh, 
Uh, you could use a pattern form. Um, yeah, I, I, I just generally don't like my notations being too wild and spilling over into other things because if you go to the input form or do something else, it just, I, I don't know, I've just used it usually being a bit more targeted and specific and, and but yes, um, yeah, I think you could. E time. And so Itai is the master that actually uses these. I'm the guy that sort of designs the underlying bits to make them work. Um, so the, but, but Itai will have, uh, oh, listen to Itai here. So, um, so okay, so, oh yeah, sure, Julio. Sure. Yep. Well, you need to, not to be sure, but to need to, yes? Yep. Sometimes integers, there's, there's some... It's always, yeah, always use the make boxes, because this, this here will be an expression, and so if it's an integer there, we still needed the string one to actually display. So sometimes the, the, the front end will fudge it and say, I think I know what you mean, and it'll do it. But quite often it won't. And so you saw that cell context errors and some of the other bits. So yes, always use make boxes. OK, so um, let's move on now, now that we've got this, we, we've got our underlying uh, knowledge of, of what's going on to template boxes. So here, let's take a look at binomial here in traditional form. So I, I've evaluate this, we get a binomial. OK. So I can evaluate that binomial, and I get binomial n comma k. It looks kind of nice. I, I mouse over it. I see this, this tooltip. Looks kind of good. And so now that you know that everything in the front end is represented as boxes, you know there's going to be some boxes underneath this. And we're going to have like a, a bracket, obviously, a grid boxy sort of thing, and another bracket. That's what it's going to be like underneath, right? And so if I now take a look at this expression here, command shift E, oh, I don't see that at all. I see something quite different. I see this template box here of two parameters, n comma k, and binomial, which doesn't look at all like the, 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 the typeset form. And in fact, if I go here to this binomial and I change this to Bessel j, for instance, and format it, it now looks like a Bessel function. It evaluates like a Bessel function. It has a tooltip of a Bessel function. And if I change this, for instance, to Legendre, Legendre p, for instance, it, it's a Legendre function. Um, and, it, and, and it evaluates, it looks like it, um, and it behaves like a, like, a, like a Legendre function, and we're back to binomials. What's going on? How does this magic happen? Well, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's look at the following. So raw boxes allows us to have some box structure and look at it directly in the output. If I command shift A, I see these boxes here, right here, this template box will be exactly like the input. So this is what the raw boxes is doing. Um, and so it gives us, we've got some arguments, a comma w, and foo legendre p. And now if I mouse over, I see it, it actually looks like foo legendre p with this tooltip. I evaluate that, and I get foo legendre p. Interesting. So if I change that to something like bar and evaluate it, I now get my tooltip being bar, and it evaluates as bar. So what's happening here is this tooltip being automatic, and we'll go and grab whatever the name of that is, the tag, and wrap it around these arguments uh, that the tooltip will be displayed as that name, and for evaluation, it's coming in, it gets that name, and it wraps it around those arguments, and we get the actual output form. So that's how it's being interpreted, but how is it being displayed? How does it know what to look like? Well, it uses this display function here as an option to the, the template box. And so this is just a normal, pure function, but it returns boxes. And so which boxes? If I apply this display function to these arguments here, it will give us another box structure. And that box structure, if we look at it, in terms of raw boxes, will appear as our output. So what the display function does is it tells the template box, hey, wrap this around these arguments, get a new box structure, and use that to display the template box. And it'll use, it'll, it'll display it like so. So that's grand. So, so um, from there, uh, we, we, we have these template boxes. Um, they're, they're quite nice, as we can tab through them. It gives us just our particular arguments. Um, and uh, we can delete the various arguments here, and it'll delete the whole thing. It looks, it looks quite nice. And we can go back here to our 
Foo Legendre P. Okay, so we can now formally state a little bit more of what a template box actually is. So a template box uh, is, I need a pointer or thing. Um, a template box is uh, a collection of boxes um, and a tag. And what the display function will do is uh, it'll take the, the tag and it'll wrap it around, uh, sorry, it'll take the display function and wrap it around those boxes to get a new uh, box. And it'll use that to draw of what the template box should look like. So it's a parameterized box structure. It's a low-level parameterized box structure. Um, and this display function, it's normally, oh, wow. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so this display function, now I need to learn how to drive it. Oh, there we go. So this display function right here is, uh, is normally um, specified on the style sheet. And it uses the display function to, to visually show what this template box will actually look like. Um, and the tag of the template box, if it's a string, it'll actually use that style on the style sheet. So I'll talk about that in just a second here. We get to it. So, so here, let's take a look at, um, in fact, let's take a look at our binomial example here. So we go back here, we get some binomial, grab that, get a couple binomials, uh, plus another binomial here, m comma k, it has the right interpretation, and so on. So how does it know what to draw like? Well, we can go here, we can go to the default style sheet, and then go to the core style sheet, and then actually search for binomial, if I, oh, well that's interesting, isn't it? Uh, uh, binomial, and go there, grab that style, go back here, paste it in here, uh, make this big so you can actually sort of see it, and turn around and look at it. And so here, when we do this, we can actually see the binomial style itself has, um, this, this template box options and a display function goes to row box and now we can actually see it. We can see the bracketing bar, the grid box, and the other bracket. Um, and so if we want to actually change what the binomial looks like uniformly, we can actually go and give it a new notation. So for instance, let's say C it could be combination n things taken m at a time. And so we could go here, get that, and we're going to use this as our new display function. So I grab those boxes. I go here. This needs to be this display function, sorry, display function there, needs to be a new display function. And we paste this in. It's got to be a subsuperscript box. We'll use this as the first argument of my template box and use this as the second argument of my template box. And now, first, second, um, there we go. And so now as, I, as I'm going to unformat that, it'll now change what the display function is. And so this, since it's on its style sheet, will become the active and dominant style of how the display function is resolved for binomial. And so these will now change uh, to this new notation. So I'm going to change this in three, and take a look over here as you see it, uh, over those ones there. Three, two, one, and it will now change, of course, all of the binomials uh, throughout this notebook to appear in this new notation. And of course, there are nice template boxes. I can go in, delete the whole things, and you know, it evaluates to the right, right, right structure. And of course, if I go back here onto the style sheet and turn around and delete that um, binomial here, it will turn back to the normal binomials uh, in terms of its formatting. OK, so the style sheets, as we can see now, are, are actually kind of important. Um, and in fact, they, they'll, they'll have the display functions for our various template boxes on the, the style sheet. So let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail. We have another example here. We've got a my commutator, um, and its display function is from before. It's got this you know, a row box with some brackets here, and so it looks like this. So what happens if we go there and, and take out its display function? So it no longer has a display function. Well, if it, if it evaluates it, it says it can't find it. And it gives us this nice, helpful error message that template box was unable to use the specified display function, or it was unable to locate the display function, possibly because the style sheet is missing. And of course, it has no style for my commutator, so it can't style that. It doesn't know what to put it in as. The, this, this my commutator? Uh, this thing here. Um, that's the, the, that underneath is a template box, and the rendering of that template box is a default error style, which builds it up from the various bits to, it's, 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 it's the template box. If I go Command Shift E, I see a template box. And so the template box rendering uh, of that is, is, is when it doesn't, it can't resolve the display function internally in the C code that we write, it goes and it goes, uh, and it can't get it, uh, I'm gonna display it like this.
Yep, so I, I just I hit shift return, and it's got this default, uh, which I'll talk about in just a second, the, the interpretation function of what's going on. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get this style here, of course, uh, that works there. We want to put this on the style sheet. So I wrote this package, which apparently is not part of pathable yet, which I'll put on. Um, so it injects styles, and so we can actually go in here and inject the style onto the style sheet. We want to add it right here on the style sheet somewhere down here. So uh, we go here, we inject styles onto where. It's going to be this input uh, notebook. And which style are we going to add? We're going to add this my commutator style. And then we're going to add an options. It will be tool, tool, um, da, template box, template box options. And we're going to add a list of options for it. And which option are we going to add? Well, we're going to add this display function. And so, and so now it changed. I, I did that a bit too quickly, but you saw this one right here. It changed. Um, should I do that again? I'll go back here to the style sheet, remove it here from the style sheet because it's added it right there. And do it again. And uh, uh. Uh. right here. There, my commutator. And now I inject it again. You'll see this my commutator, it will change as the style goes uh, onto the style sheet. There. It needs, needs a bit of updating sometimes um, as it goes. Okay, so we've, we've now injected the styles onto the style sheet. Okay, so as, as before now, we've got a my commutator. Uh, it works. We can turn around and we want this my commutator, of course, to appear like a commutator. If I, if I get some of these here, I add them together, uh, you know, my VT, something else like that, we want these to actually appear as commutators. So we need these expressions to appear as a different set of boxes. Which boxes? We want to be able to turn around and make a make boxes. Make boxes of some expression here, a my commutator of that in standard form is going to be equal to which boxes? Well, these boxes here. So let's just grab those. It's a template box. Here, and of course the same trick as before. We know this is A, you know B. This has to be uh, make boxes of A comma standard form, and the same way for the B here. And now, of course, if I enter this, evaluate it. I now appear, and we've got our notation uh, in terms of my commutators. So by, by defining this make boxes rule uh, just below that I've just scrolled off screen, uh, we now have our, our commutators. And so one of the uh, other things you can actually do um, is actually change this interpretation function. It's one of the other things. Right now, this is being interpreted as my commutator. I can get this commutator. I can copy it, hit the copy key, command copy. Um, and then go off to an external program and paste it here, and it'll actually copy as my commutator. And it uses the interpretation rule, which is the default one, um, which just wraps the, the head around it. But we could change that. We could turn around and say uh, we want the interpre interpretation function uh, to be um, some function here. And which function do we want it to be of some boxes? Well, let's call it like ext commutator. Of, and we'll go B comma A just to just get it around a different way just to show that we can. And so we, we get these boxes for the interpretation function. Um, so the interpretation function will return a set of boxes that it should be evaluated as. And so we'll put this as argument two. So in other words, we'll, we'll reverse the arguments here, argument one. And now if I evaluate that, it'll actually evaluate as an X commutator. Uh, because it'll be using this interpretation function, gives it a set of boxes to interpret as, and those will be run through make expression. And in fact, if we copy that now uh, out to uh, our external program, we'll see it's an actual X commutator. Okay, so that's kind of nice. Uh, now we can move on to uh, taking a look at uh, associations. So this is a new feature. This won't be working in your notebooks, um, but let's talk about uh, lead derivatives. So um, Let's give a notation for lead derivatives. We'll use a, a, this. This is a template here, um, or uh, as a pattern, as a as a base. Okay. So we'd like some template box. We're going to call this a lead derivative. Derivative, um, and we don't need the interpretation function. It's just going to be the standard one. And so, which boxes is it going to display as? Well, it'll display as these boxes here. 
So we just go here, grab our boxes, our output and our display function here uh, will just be those boxes. And so that, that looks, uh, well at least it's got the right output, but of course we haven't substituted these parameters. I could put another parameter here in T, and then I'd go through here and I'd normally go in and put this as, this is a uh, number one, this is maybe number, it's got the B, it's number two, and this is number three, like so, and now it, it changes, and of course if I change the, you know, some other input, it feeds back into my template box of the queue. I change this to, you know, a D, and so on. It feeds back through. So we can do that. However, we could turn around um, and do something a little bit different here. We can actually use named keys in functions now. So we can actually call this X, um, and we can call this something hash Y, and call this something hash T. And so this is now a function that will take an association. So this is a normal bit of Mathematica, um, and so we, we give it an association now. And what's our association that we're going to put plug in here? Well, we're going to put something like x goes to you know a, uh, y goes to b, for instance, and t goes to um, t uh, or w. Let's say w. Okay, and so this now, this, this, uh, this function here, applied, will give us a new box structure, and as before, uh, raw boxes, we can actually take a look at it. And so this, this, this is built into Mathematica, the handling of these keys, which we can put named keys in, working on associations. So that's kind of nice. So we can actually name the variables now, and because of course we're plugging in numbers like, you know, 3.1 or 4.2 into a Legendre function or something, you can't remember which one's uh, labeled, and so we can actually label them kind of nicely like this. And so here we go and we can put this as a display function, um, and it operates, instead of on a list of things, it'll operate now on uh, an association. And so now if I go here and I change this value here, you can actually see the values are changing in the association, and just like before, we can go and we can grab and inject this onto the style sheet, uh, get our our styles, turn around and put a inject styles. What are we going to inject? We're going to inject the lead derivative. And which style is it going to look like? Well, it's going to look like this display function. Plug that in there. And now um, we don't actually need to specify the display function in our output like so, because right now it's actually on the style sheet right here at the bottom because of our inject styles. There's a lead derivative right there, which we just did. Okay, so now we have this nice sort of template boxes working in, sorry, uh, template boxes here, working for lead derivatives. We can add those things um, and uh, we can evaluate them. We get lead derivatives and we could turn around and build up a notation as before, uh, would make a make expression. We need to be able to lead derivatives to actually work. We go here, grab the lead derivative uh, and so on, plug that in in standard form. Um, is going to be equal to, uh, of course, we'll call this A, B, A, B, uh, T, is going to be some set of boxes. Which boxes? Well, these boxes. Um, and of course, this A here needs to be a make boxes of the A in standard form. And likewise, this needs to be make boxes of B. And oh, indeed, indeed. And this, of course, should be uh, of t. Okay, and now uh, this will evaluate, and our lead derivatives here, uh, of course, will will look like lead derivatives, and they'll they'll turn around and we can you know, change them and so on. And so these are all working now by associations. And so that, that's kind of nice. So this, as we look at the template box for a lead derivative, we can see some sort of mapping of variables and it gives us a little bit more context than just sort of some sort of slots with maybe numbers or something else like that. They're entirely equivalent. Um, this will allow us to do other tricky things coming up. Um, but, uh, and, and it'll also work with you know, template slot sequences and other advanced complex, uh, uh, concepts in, in template boxes. Okay. So one of the other things is missing arguments now. If, if I evaluate this template box, it has no arguments. And so it doesn't know what to display here, um, of course. And if I go in and I take a look at that, I see it doesn't have any arguments. 
but if I can enter some arguments here, A and B, it's now filled those in. So it's, it's a little bit nicer that it can actually handle some sorts of inputs that sort of couldn't before. Same way with lead derivatives here, we've got a, it's got a display function, so it knows how to fill these in, uh, A, B, and C, and we can actually see it's filled in those particular arguments uh, in, in its usage. Okay, so one other thing I'd like to point out as well is if we have this, you know, we're gonna go fill in some arguments here, A, B, and C with this lead derivative. As I cursor through this, it's sometimes hard to see the extent of where the template box actually is. So there's an actual option and it's set on this box and we can actually see where the, the, the template is, where it begins and extends. And so if we unformat that, we can actually see these template box options are directly set on this box. And so it's got a editing highlight color um, argument highlight color and uh, color for the actual overall template box. And so we could go here and we could turn around and style it by going to the option inspector, typing in template box, going here and editing highlight color, change that here to something like follows and change this one here to something like that, editing highlight color. And now as I go in here and edit it, I can actually see some sort of nice, you know, uh, Maybe you want to change the colors, maybe they're a bit garish, but you can actually sort of see the extent of the template box and see which bits are actually the arguments of the template box. And in fact, we could turn around and do the exact same thing for the notebook here, go here and change the editing highlight color for all of the template boxes throughout the notebook. Um, and so, like so. And now as we go back and we take a look at, I don't know, there are binomials or uh, our commutators here as, we, as I go through my commutator, you'll see it's highlighted. As I go through the multiple, oh, I forgot to mention as well, of course. Uh, template boxes, of course, can be nested at any various levels. They all work and we can see stuff. And now, as I cursor through, I can see, well, that's I'm inside the binomial. Um, and if I go in, inside here, I'm inside the Legendre P. So it's, it's kind of nice. And so it'll be useful in various contexts. It won't be turned on by default, but um, uh, you can specify it yourself on actual style sheets. Okay, um, so now, now that we've got to this stage, I go here, I turn the selected notebook, I will turn that off, uh, our editing highlighting. Okay, so, so since this is a workshop, I've, I've had to go kind of fast to get through all the various bits of the content. Um, one of the, the final examples, you've probably got enough information now to, to possibly try and tackle this this problem here. So the, the template boxes are a bit aside. In the end, you'll probably use them yourself. Um, but uh, one example here is that normally when we have a list of lists, it appears in standard form uh, like a list of lists. In traditional form, it appears like a matrix. Would like to have the output of this to be like a matrix in normal standard form. How would we go about doing that? Well, we're going to have some kind of make boxes rule for list of lists, but we've got to have some sort of correct holding, and this is one where evaluation comes into it. I'll just evaluate that, and I'll show you that when I hit Command-Shift-N here in standard form, as, as I evaluate this, I now get matrices. And so it looks like a matrix. It's kind of nice. How does it go about and do this? What would be the rule? The, the, it, it's going to be a make boxes rule, um, and it's something a bit like this. So, uh, we've got to be a bit, let's move that up a bit. I'll get this on the bottom of the screen here. So what it'll do here, uh, make boxes, if it's on a list, uh, something that's matrix queue, so it's list-like, we've got this unevaluated. We need to put these unevaluated around various things. We're mapping this function, a make box is standard form. We're making sure we're holding it here, holding it there, but basically we go, we get a matrix of things, we make all the various arguments, and we shove it into a grid box in the right way, and we get this kind of output here. Okay, so uh, now that we've seen how the, the difficulty in doing all of this with the make boxes and make expression rules, we'll go back down to the notation package. And so let me just quit the kernel so you know that I've got nothing up my sleeve here, um, and we'll see how the notation package actually works. So right now, after, and yeah, that's a, a, a 2.1 one bug in our development version, um, which I'm gonna fix here, but it's still working. Mathematica doesn't know how to understand this ring plus and ring, ring addition, ring times. So we can turn around and we can create a notation statement here, um, or off the palette, just here, uh, and uh, we put in the boxes on this side, would be some escape SCR uh, of B, um, and that's going to be ring plus of A underscore comma B underscore. And likewise, we can make another rule, do the exact same thing for times, 
and make this ring times. And so this, this notation statement basically says that these boxes should appear as this sort of internally as this full form, and this full form should appear as this boxes. It goes both ways. And if we evaluate that now, and now go back and evaluate our, our expression here, our ring plus and ring times, it actually has exactly the right full form. Um, so this was a good bit simpler than adding our make boxes and make expression rules. So what's going on here? How does this work? Well, uh, if we take a look at the internals of this by going and printing the notation rules and getting the right context and basically taking a look at what goes on underneath, it turns out the notation package has its own version of make boxes and make expression, which is almost the same thing. Now, it does some other tricky bits like parenthesizing some stuff in some places, which are sort of some cooler bits which you'll want to know later on, but sometimes people don't want the notation package to come up, they don't want to load it, so you can actually go in and take a look at what the notation package produces and copy those refined rules uh, yourself, if you so need to. Okay. Um, so let's take a look now at an example of up and down. We can redo this now and take a look at notation of, of a up arrow and make that up of a. And huh, there we go. Up of a. Um, and gives us a nice warning, and the same with down of B here, down arrow, and make that down. And now, if I type in, you know, uh, up of A plus down, down of B plus, you know, I don't know, uh, down of C, and I hit Command Shift N, it appears as before we had, and uh, it parses, and it has, of course, the correct full form as before. Okay, and so one final thing, uh, nice thing you can actually do is add input aliases. Let's get some space here. Go back up here, and we're going to add an input alias for, let's say, our commutators. We'll call it com, for instance. Uh, there's no, no, nothing right now for com. So we go here, and we add an input alias. We could do it off the palette or add input alias here. Um, and so we're going to add one for com, and it's going to appear as some kind of boxes. Which boxes do we want? Well, we go back here and grab those boxes. These ones here, say, for instance, of a commutator. And go down here, paste this in. And now, put those in as placeholders, placeholders. And now if I enter some escape, com, escape, plus, you know, escape, com, escape, I've got a nice, easy way to do this. Uh, I can, you know, A, B, C, D, and it'll appear as my commutator, of course, because we don't have that make boxes rule. I could go back and re-enter that make boxes rule for commutators down here, and now our commutators will appear in their output as they should, and it has, of course, all the, the, the correct full form. Or I could have done simply the exact same thing and put it in and, and using the notation package again to get the commutators. Okay, so I'll just round out this talk. And I'll mention uh, there's this thing called tag boxes, which you can use instead of template boxes, um, which were used before. Uh, they're generally, it's been superseded now by, by template boxes, which I added maybe eight years ago now, I guess. Um, actually, for uh, uh, a presentation here, uh, Wolfram uh, Technology Conference, um, and now they've sort of gone everywhere, which, which, which is grand. Um, but so the tag boxes underneath this, before here, as you can actually see, this tag box, uh, the, it has this tag grid, and this actually controls the formatting of this grid, and it'll, it'll keep this formatting. So we use it in those kind of places. We'll use it in plot. Um, I, maybe there's a bug on the screen for, for showing the, the, the oh, let's just do it. There we go. Okay, so we, we've got these things, we, these placeholders we can actually tab through, fill them in, and actually underneath you'll actually see that those are tag boxes with placeholders. So uh, they're used there. Uh, we've, they're also used in mouse appearance. Um, and so we can actually take a look at the underlying form here, and you see this is tag box of Bob with this appearance tag X. We could change that to Y, for instance, and, and, and move over it. So they're used in a few places. There's an example here of old-style typesetting uh, with, with, uh, like, with tag boxes here, um, and it, it has certain problems. We'll, we'll just you know, run this and you know, actually take a look at it, and you see this Legendre P. It has this right full form, but for instance, you can grab the head by itself. It's sort of disassociated, whereas the template box, you, you can't grab that. It'll, it'll grab the whole, um, the, whole, the whole expression. Okay. Uh, one final thing I'd like to mention here is base styles. Uh, and so in normal, in a, in a text editor here, if, I, if I've got a text editor, you know, I enter some text here, and then I make something italic, and then I 
I, I go next to it and I start typing, it'll pick up that style. And same way with style boxes, it'll pick up this background. But sometimes in your design of notations, you don't want that to actually happen. So you can use this thing here, base style. And so this is now attached to just this underscript box right here. And now as I type next to it, it doesn't pick up that style. So this base style and default base style are options to most of our underlying boxes. Um, and one final thing, I should actually mention is our precedence and grouping for all of these various operators. So for our partial derivatives, for instance, um, the, partial, the grouping and precedence of that, uh, this whole operator here is based on its base. So that's true for subscripts and superscripts and sort of for some other structures. It takes the default rules of Mathematica, but you can change those rules with syntax form, which is a bit advanced. I'll also mention, in rounding this out, that, uh, for instance, some typesetting here in, in, the, in the front end is actually context sensitive. For instance, point here, just typesets is, it, it doesn't do anything, but um, Lou here has got this uh, set up so that when we, um, inside graphics, graphics of point will actually be rendered into a point. And so it, Lou achieves this by making the make expression rules uh, context sensitive for graphics. Another interesting irrelevant note um, is that a lot of the whole box model that we've developed in the front end is actually very similar to CSS, the model. So from Neil and me and others, um, you, you see that the inheritance of styles is quite similar to cascading style sheets. Our margins and paddings are similar to image margins and uh, frame margins. So it turns out there's probably some underlying truth of how you structure these, these, these things which is common to these systems which have been developed independently. And in fact, I'd, I'd even suggest it looks kind of interesting if you're there's other upcoming related talks. Kevin will be talking about his CSS importer uh, today at 3.30. Um, other uh, related talks, John will be talking about the state of the front end today at 11. Um, the whole team, if you're interested in this, um, will be around on Thursday at 1. And of course, Lou will be talking about understanding Manipulate, which is built up on these underlying technologies we've got here. So we've talked about how the, the front end is represented by these boxes, and these talks build on that. So, in conclusion, um, to, to make your notations actually work, what you do is you enter a, a structure in 2D typesetting, you type that into Mathematica, um, you unformat it, uh, and then you copy and then you fill in a few bits to get a display function with, with some slots, either as, as numbered slots or an association. You get the style, you put it on the style sheet, you create a make boxes rule, and then for bonus points, you create an input alias for the notation. And that's basically what we do internally. And so using this, you can make up your own uh, notations and actually have a, 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 a comprehensible notebook that uses the notations you're used to using in your field of study.